humbly, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, saints, I'm, is everything still well? Yes. All okay. is well, man. Okay. I, I just can see my slide presentation, so I'm going to just continue. If anything happens, you could just let me know. Okay. Yeah. Okay, what, what we're going to be studying, we're going to basically looking at the prophetic order of events in which they're going to unfold. We're going to look at basically a very simple chart, which I believe it's very important that we as Seventh-day Adventists have a clear understanding of. And I would love to show us exactly what's happening within the world that indicates that probation is about to close first for the Seventh-day Adventist church. First for the Seventh-day Adventist church and which we're gonna prove in the study that when the door of mercy begins to shut it first closes for the church, the Seventh-day Adventist church. And someone might think, why is that so? God will test us first on the issue of the mark of the beast as because we understand the issue. The world does not understand the issue. So God has to bring to us first the test of this crisis. And the test is going to be the seal of God or the mark of the beast. And there's a sad delusion that has come over our church. And many sincere brethren, they believe that when this crisis comes, all we need to just say is no to Sunday and yes to the Sabbath. And that means we'll have the seal of God. That's a deception. The Bible teaches very clearly there's a condition in which we must attain to in order to receive the seal of the living God. The Bible is quite clear and the spirit of prophecy is clear, which we're going to look at. That is a condition we have to attain to. And should we fail to attain to this condition, no matter what position we hold within the Seventh-day Adventist church, we will be swept by the crisis. And we are just studying now during divine service that we have but a few months before this crisis really breaks upon us. Now, to some of us, we might think that is impossible, that a Sunday law is about to take place. Yes, friends, within a few months, we are about to witness this crisis. We are actually told in the book, Early Writings, that what some have taken years to learn, we will have to learn in a few short months. I believe those few months that we have or we are now living in. I believe that 2020, this year that we are living in, as the beginning of the end. Now, I wish I had time to go through all of this and show you. This is not the purpose of our study. We were showing this in 2019 that 2020 is going to be no ordinary year. And truly, we have seen things we have never seen before. I truly believe, saints, as we're going to go through the study, we're going to walk through a very simple study. Unfortunately, in the study, there's not much prophetic events we're going to look at. But I'm going to urge you, if you can see, there's a, if you can see, there's, there's a picture of, of our, our ministry logo. You will find much of our studies on YouTube, especially the study we've just done today, Sunday Law Upta Update Part 3, which shows that we are nearing the end of this world. We are nearing the end of this world. I'm going to share one quotation, and then we're going to dive into the study. In Volume 8 of the Testimonies for the Church, page 135. Volume 8 of the Testimonies for the Church, page 135. And I would also suggest that we take notes, saints, if we are following, that we take notes. Volume 8 of the Testimonies, page 135. The servant of the Lord says, a storm is coming relentless in its fury. Are you prepared to meet it? Now listen to the question that the servant of the Lord says. She says, a storm is coming relentless in its fury. Are we prepared to meet it? Then she goes on, she says, we need not say the perils of the lost days are soon to come. She says, no, the perils of the lost day have already come. What the servant of the Lord is saying, we need not look off in the future for the final crisis. She's saying the crisis is just before us. And unfortunately, saints, unfortunately, it's a sad reality that we are told in a book, Great Controversy, page 608, that as the storm approaches, the storm that we are warned about, the Sunday law, we are told that as the storm approaches, a large class who professed faith in the third angel's message, but were not sanctified by obedience to the truth, will abandon their position and join the ranks of the opposition. Now listen to what the servant of the Lord saying. She says, as the storm approaches the Sunday law, a large class of Adventists who profess faith in the third angel's message, but have not been sanctified by obedience to the truth, she says, 
will abandon the opposition and join the ranks of the opposition. Now, can you, can you believe that? That as we are about to near the crisis, we are told that many Adventists are going to abandon the faith and keep Sunday. And the reason for this, we are told they were not sanctified. That means that they heard the truth, they understood the theory of truth, but there was no practical steps of obedience. And saints, could it be that we as Seventh-day Adventists, you that are watching, you understand the truth theoretically, but you are failing to obey. We are told that a storm is coming, relentless in its fury. And unless we are prepared by building upon the words of Jesus, you know, it's very interesting. I want us to see something interesting in Matthew. Come with me to Matthew chapter 7. Now, we haven't yet even started study. This is the Lord just speaking now. We haven't yet got, got, gotten into our study, but the Lord wants to speak to our hearts. Come with me to Matthew chapter 7. We're going to Matthew 7. Matthew chapter 7. You know, friends, I just hope we got Bibles. And I hope you're not just sitting and this is entertainment. We've come to a time in society when men love to be entertained. They put on their laptops and immediately the mind goes into entertainment mode. This is no entertainment, a storm's coming. And Jesus is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. It's about to break upon the world and God have mercy upon us. It's gonna break first upon the church. Friends, a storm is coming relentless in its fury. What must we do to get ready? What must we do to get ready? I want us to see in Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. Jesus is going to tell us about a storm. Jesus is going to tell us how to get ready for the storm. Now, what we shared in volume 8 of the testimonies, a storm is coming. Great Controversy 6 or 8 tells us that when the storm approaches, many Adventists are going to abandon their faith and they're going to join the ranks of the opposition and going to accept Sunday, the mark of the peace. And she tells us the reason for this. She says, by uniting with the world, and by partaking of its spirit, these adventures have come to view matters nearly in the same light. And when the test is brought, the Sunday law test, they are prepared to choose the easier popular side. Men of talent and pleasing address, men who once rejoice in this adventist message will abandon, she says, and join the ranks of the opposition. Friends, a storm's coming and God wants us to awake. He wants us to awake and to get ready. I, I truly believe that time is almost finished. I believe this with all my heart. I believe that we are living in the final months of this earth's history. Unfortunately, we cannot prove it all in this one study. As I said, this is our ministry, Messengers of Praise and Truth. All our studies are there, which show without a shadow of a doubt we have a few months left, that Jesus is coming within the next few months. And the words of Jesus saints rings within my heart in early writings, we are told, page 118, get ready, get ready, get ready, for the fierce anger of the Lord is soon to come. Rend your heart and not your garments. In Matthew chapter 7, Matthew chapter 7, what can I do to get ready for the storm that's about to break upon the world? Matthew chapter 7, take note what the Bible says in verse 24. Jesus is going to tell us about a storm and how to get ready. Matthew 7 verse 24, it says, actually, yes, verse 24, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, I will liken him unto a wise man. Sorry, sorry. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. Now listen. The rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. So Jesus is saying a storm is going to come and it's going to break upon our houses, upon our characters. And Jesus mentions a class here who when the storm breaks upon their house, that house stands why it was founded upon the rock. What does it mean to be founded upon the rock? Jesus told us in verse 24, men who hear the words of Jesus, and he doesn't just hear them, but he practices the words of Jesus. That's a wise man that builds his house upon the rock. When the storm comes, that house stands. But Jesus mentions another clause within the church, another clause who are like the group of people that say to Jeremiah, who love to hear Jeremiah speak, but they refused obedience to the words that came out of Jeremiah's mouth. I want us to see Jesus mentions another group in the church who's also going to face the storm. Take note what Jesus says in verse, verse 26. 
and everyone that hear these signs of mine and shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Hmm. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. There's another group, another group, the storm hits both groups within the church, both groups who hear the words of Jesus, but there's something that distinguishes these two groups, one year and one clause obey. Another clause, yeah, and it's just entertainment, the words of Jesus. Every sermon they yeah, it's just entertainment for the purpose of entertainment. And it's sad, saints, it's very, very sad. We have come to an age where ministers delight to please and entertain the flock instead of calling out sin and calling the people up higher, calling them to repentance, to flee from the rot to come. Unfortunately, we have come to an age where ministers love to entertain the flock and the flock loves it so. I must speak plainly, our souls are at stake and God wants Elijah to come. Elijah must come, not to flat us in our sins. Oh no, Elijah must come with a message of rebuke, calling us up higher, telling us either we serve Baal or we serve God. Cease to hurt in between two opinions. Friends, a storm is coming relentless in its fury. And Jesus is saying, get ready, get ready, get ready. Friends, I am not here to entertain you. I'm here to tell you a storm is coming. And you know, it's very interesting. I believe Noah was telling people a storm was coming. I believe there are people who came to hear him like how you are hearing this message now. Some of them mocked in their mind, said it can't be that serious. If it was that serious, at least the theologians of our time would be telling us this. At least the professors of our time would be telling us a storm's coming. Unfortunately, those professors and theologians did not say a storm was coming. Noah was the sole voice declaring a storm's coming. And friends, if you're gonna wait for certain people within the church to tell us a storm is coming, you're gonna wait for too long. A storm is coming, oh friends, a storm is coming. We have but a few months and Jesus is pleading. He's pleading with you, he's pleading with me. The Lord is saying, get your life in order. Set your life in order, a storm's coming. Friends, we have but a few months. Jesus is about to come. My heart trembles, but I rejoice. Why do I tremble? I realize there's a progress that must take place in my life, but I rejoice because I'm going to see my master. I want to see him in peace. Friends, are you ready? Are you ready to meet your savior? Before we get into our study, let us just have a word of prayer one more time. Father, we thank you so much. I feel your presence with us. Thank you so much for speaking so plainly. Please continue to be with us as we continue to study. We love you, Father, and we ask these things humbly in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Friends, I, I, I don't know if you can just give me a signal that all is well thus far, because only thing I can see on my screen is just my slides. I can see nothing else. So if you, anyone can just give me a signal that all is well, and then we can continue. All is yeah, well. Are you going to be sharing your... your okay, sorry, Tanya, you can go ahead. Sorry? Or are you no, going I'm to be sharing your slides? Yeah, no. Can, can you see my slides? Can, can you see the slides? Yes, I can, I can, I can see, see it, my brother. It's, it's, it's there. Okay, can you, see, can you see the next one? Uh, yes. Okay, now, okay, it's fine, it's fine. I'm going to read this quotation. Great Controversy, page 435, paragraph 2. Ish, 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 ish. Okay. Hmm. My screen is partially blocked, but this is what the quotation says. Great Controversy 435, paragraph two. It says the work of judgment, which began in 1844, must continue until the cases of all are decided, both of the living and the dead. Hence, it will extend to the close of human probation. Now, what I want us to comprehend from this quotation is that the servant of the Lord is telling us that the judgment which we know as Seventh-day Adventists began in 1844, specifically of the dead, the investigative judgment of the dead began in 1844. But according to this quotation, we see that the judgment does not continue with the dead and must shift to the living. Hence, she says, 
will take us to the close of probation. So if I would, if, if, if you can see my hands here, yeah, I would say that this side is the judgment of the dead, which began in 1844. This represents the close of probation. My other hand, this represents the close of probation. But in between the close of probation and the judgment of the dead, she says there's the judgment of the living. So before we can end, before probation can close, we must shift from the judgment of the dead, we must shift to the judgment of the living. In other case, what she's saying that probation before it can close, God has to investigate the cases of the living. God must judge the church whilst we are alive. He must judge all the living whilst we are alive. In other words, God will judge the living. And as soon as he's finished charging all the living, probation will close. So what we want to understand in this study is when probation closes, or when does the judgment of the living begin? And if we can understand when does the judgment of the living begin, we can understand when more or less probation closes for the church. We don't have dates. We don't work with dates, but we work with prophetic events. We are actually told in the book, Great Controversy, page 594. Great Controversy, page 594. We are told so in the prophecies, the future is open before us as plainly as it was for the disciples by the words of Christ. Now listen to this part. She says the events in connection with the close of probation, listen carefully, the events in connection with the close of probation and the preparation for the time of trouble are clearly revealed. Listen to that, what the servants of the Lord saying. She's saying the events in connection with the close of probation. So before probation closes, servants of the Lord saying there's, there are events that show us we are about to enter into the close of probation. She says those things are clearly revealed. So we want to see what event shows us that probation is about to close, specifically for the Seventh-day Adventist Church. What event, no date, but event we want to see because she says it's clearly revealed. Not only is that clearly revealed, she says not only is the, the event in connection with the close of probation clearly revealed, but she goes on to say that the work of preparation is clearly revealed. So not only does God want us to understand the events that show us probation is going to close, not only that, he wants us to understand the condition we must be found in to receive the seal of the living God, in able to stand when there's no mediator in the sanctuary above. Now, saints, God is actually trying to prepare people to stand in his sight without a mediator. This is the purpose why Seventh-day Adventism has come into existence. This is the only reason why we exist as a church, is to prepare people to stand true to God when there's no mediator in the heavenly sanctuary. That's Manuscript Releases, Volume 1, page 2 to 8. This is why I exist as an Adventist. This is why you should exist as an Adventist. We should try and prepare. But there's no way you can prepare someone else if you yourself don't know what must be done. So this is why we want to try and study, try and see what is the event in connection with the close of probation. We can, unfortunately, we don't have the time now to exhaust all these things. This is just an introduction. That's all it can be. There's just too much information and we're not gonna try and squash everything in. We're gonna look at this briefly and God willing another to go deeper. As I said as well, our ministry has all these studies there as well. So now what I want us to do, I want us to come with me in your Bible. We're going in our Bibles to 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. And I'm not sure if we're going to allow question and answers. I would like question and answer session after the study, because normally after the study, there's normally questions. And I, when we study this with the church, normally we, we, we are able to walk much, much more information. But due to this, I'm not so used to this, so we're not going to be able to do it as thorough as we would do it. So I'm hope if possible, if there could be questions and answers, if there's any questions, questions, I'm, I'll be more than willing to, to answer the questions. So what I want us to do now in 2 Peter, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 19. The Bible says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn and the day star arise within our hearts. So the Bible says we have a sure word of prophecy that we do well, that we take heed. So God wants us to take heed to the sure word of prophecy. Why? 
The Bible says that prophecy is as a light that shined in a dark place. Now, let me just suggest this, that the future to every one of us, including myself, is dark. I don't know what the future holds, but the Bible says prophecy is like a light that shineth in the dark place. Though the, the future is dark, prophecy sheds its light into the future. In other words, prophecy reveals to me what is to come in the future. And it's very interesting that prophecy is to cause the day star to arise within our hearts. Who is the day star? It's Jesus Christ. God wants us to understand prophecy, saints. We're actually told in Gospel Workers 141, Gospel Workers 148, we are told that ministers are to present the sure word of prophecy as the foundation of the faith of Seventh-day Adventists. The books of Daniel and Revelation are to be carefully studied in connection the words, behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sins of the world. So we're actually admonished that when we come to study the work of a minister as to walk the flock to tell the flock what does the prophetic word say where are we living prophetically this is the work of a watchman a watchman is to stand on the walls and as this is danger is to blow the trumpet that everyone within the church within the city are to take warning that a crisis is coming and this watchman is going to blow the trumpet and tell you a storm is coming and by god's grace saints let us get ready let us get ready now second peter says something interesting that prophecy is likened to a light. Prophecy is likened to a light. Now, very few people study prophecy, but even amongst those who study prophecy, they can mess up. Because the Bible says that light, which is prophecy, can become darkness if you don't understand the correct order of events. You have to understand the prophetic order of events, otherwise the light of prophecy can become darkness. This is what the Bible teaches. Come with me to Job chapter 10. I want us to see what the Bible says in the book of Job. Job, the 10th chapter. I want us to see what the Bible says in Job chapter 10. Now we just saw from our Bibles that prophecy is likened to a light. We're in Job chapter 10. Job chapter 10, I'm gonna read verse 22. Job 10, verse 22. The Bible says in Job chapter, two, chapter 10, verse 22, the Bible says, a land of darkness, as darkness itself, and of the shadow of death. This is the part I want us to see. It says, without any order, without any order, where the light is as darkness. Get that, saints. The Bible is saying that without any order, light becomes darkness. Now, what is light? We just saw in the Bible that the Bible likens light to prophecy. So prophecy, without any order, if you just study prophecy haphazardly, you don't know the correct order of events, that light of prophecy can become darkness. Why? You might think you have extra time when the prophetic chart says, no, your time's up closer. It's more, your, your time, your limit is much more closer, but you can't see it. You just study haphazardly and the light becomes darkness because then the crisis catches you off guard. And we are told in a book, Great Controversy 598, the servant of the Lord says, we have a chart. There's the chart. We have a chart pointing out every way mark on our heavenward journey. And we ought to guess at nothing. This Bible, the prophetic word, she says, is a chart that points out our way to our heavenward journey. And where, where we are now in our journey as a movement and as a world, I can tell you we have a few more months before we enter into the pearly gates, Jerusalem, the holy city, before Jesus closes probation in the heavenly sanctuary. Friends, I truly believe this. And I wish we could study it all out in detail. Now, unfortunately, we're gonna, we're gonna lay a foundation now. Now, the Bible says without any order, the light is as darkness. So we need to have order. Now, I'm just gonna grab a book there and I wanna read a quotation for us. I'm reading a quotation. I'm reading a quotation from the book, Education. The book, Education. And friends, I just play, pray and hope that you're taking notes. We want to go back and study this for ourselves to see what I am saying is not my own words, but this is Bible and spirit of prophecy. I'm reading from the book, Education. The book, Education, page 178. 
Now listen to this quotation. It's going to affirm what we just discovered in the Bible, that prophecy cannot be fulfilled haphazardly. There's an order in which it must be fulfilled. There's an order in which it must be fulfilled. It says here in the book Education, in the book Education, page 178, she says, the history which the great I am, that's God the Father, has marked out in his word, uniting link of the link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to eternity in the future, tells us where we are today in the great procession of the ages. That's sweet. That is sweet, saints. Listen to that quotation. You know, sometimes we can rush to the Bible, spirit of prophecy, but this is sweet. She says, the history which the great I am has marked out in his word, uniting a link of the link in the prophetic chain from eternity in the past to eternity in the future, tells us where we are today in the great procession of the ages. So she's saying the Bible, the, the prophetic word, tells us where we are standing from eternity in the past to eternity in the future. So if we can study, this is what the servant of the Lord saying, we can know where we are standing. We can know literally how close we are to actually enter into eternity. And as I always say, eternity is so near that I can almost reach out my hand and feel it. Jesus is coming, saints. Jesus is coming. Probation's gonna close very soon. And God's saying, get ready, get ready. Now listen to what the quotation goes on and it says, the quotation goes on. The quotation goes on and it says, all that prophecy has foretold has come into pass until the present time, until 2020. Someone to the Lord saying, all oh, that prophecy has foretold until the present time, the present time today is 2020. She says, has been traced on the pages of history. Then this is the part I want us to get. And we may be assured that, and we may be assured, and we may be assured that all which is yet to come will be fulfilled in its order. Did you get that? Did you get that, saints? The servant of the Lord saying, the servant of the Lord saying that prophecy must be fulfilled in its order. Now we saw that from the Bible, the spirit of prophecy is saying the exact same thing. Now what we're going to do, we're almost done. We're going to walk through these things very quickly. And if there's questions, you're more than welcome to pose those questions. There are much more studies to this topic that we are just dealing with now. What I want us to do now, let's walk through this. Come with me in your Bible. What we're going to do, we're going to actually walk through a prophetic chart. Unfortunately, I do not have a board with me to write on a board. And normally I would do the study with a board and we would study it with a board. And, um, but, it's, but it's fine. We will just continue. And I, I do have a chart which would be able to help us a bit. So what I want us to do now, come with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 22. We're going to walk through this chart. How are we going to walk through it? We're not going to walk through it from the front to the back, but we're going to walk through this prophetic chart from the back to the front. So come with me to Revelation 22. Now, every one of us should understand at least this part of the prophetic chart, Revelation chapter 22. Revelation chapter 22. Revelations 22. I want us to see what the Bible says in Revelations chapter 22. Are we there, saints? Revelation 22. I'm going to read verse 11. Revelation 22 verse 11. What we're going to read now, this verse, I don't believe I need to explain I don't, I, don't, I don't believe I have to explain, to explain to you this verse. As Adventists, we should know the meaning of Revelation 22, verse 11. Now listen to what this verse says. It says, He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. He which is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. He that is holy, let him be holy still. Now I'm just asking you a simple question. When Jesus pronounces these words, my question is this, is probation open or is probation closed? When Jesus says, holy, holy still, righteous, righteous still, filthy, filthy still, when he pronounces these words, is probation still open? 
and I'm hoping you're saying probation is closed because when he says this, probation is closed. Now I want us to see, this is the close of human probation. I want us to see when probation closes, what's the next great event? Yes, there are events, but I want us to see the, the next major event. So when probation closes, there's the close of probation. What comes after the close of probation? Not immediately, but sometime later. Verse 12 tells us, verse 12 tells us what comes next. Verse 12 says, and behold, I come quickly and my reward is worth me to give unto every man according to his work. So what we see very clearly in Revelations chapter 22, in Revelations 22 verse 11 is the close of human probation. Now I'm gonna suggest this, that for Seventh-day Adventists, this is not our close of probation. We're gonna prove this. This is the general close of probation. We must get ready before this point. And we're gonna show you this in the study that Seventh-day Adventism does not have until this point. We have until the crisis. We have until the day of the decree. Until the day of the decree, Esther and the Israelites had to get ready. We have until the day of the decree. And we're gonna show you what does that mean. But I want you to follow thus far that the Bible is telling us that probation closes first and then Jesus Christ comes back the second time. Now I'm gonna go to a chart. You don't have to look at everything and try and get everything in your mind. All I want you to look at is the extreme end of this chart where it shows you the close of probation and next to the close of probation, it has the second coming of Jesus. This is what we saw in the Bible. So we're gonna look at this in the chart. I want us to see this. Okay, why my slides are not moving. Okay, saints, something has gone wrong. My slide is not moving. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, okay, okay. Are we all fine, saints? Is everything, <laughs> yeah, if you could just give me a signal that all is well. Thank you. Thank you. Now, saints, I don't know if you can see, I'm hoping you can see that on the extreme end of the chart, to my right, it's the close of probation. And then there's seven plagues and then you can see the second coming. I, 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 can you see that chart? So basically that, that, that's what we saw from the Bible. There's a close of probation and then as the second coming. Now, what I want to do now, I want us to look and see in between the close of probation to the second coming, there's something called the seven lost plagues, the seven lost plagues. Now, this is gonna help us understand the next aspect of the chart. Now, come with me in your Bible to Revelation chapter 15. Revelation, the 15th chapter. Revelation chapter 15. Revelation chapter 15. Now, I want us to see in Revelation chapter 15, verse eight. In Revelation chapter 15, verse eight, what we're gonna see, actually, before I even read this verse, I want to say this, I'm asking a simple question. It's unfortunately, I cannot hear you, but I would like to hear a response if possible. If it's not possible, it's fine. But if one would sin today, does the Bible teach in Hebrews 4, verse 16, that we can approach the throne to obtain mercy. Does the Bible tell us that God still offers us mercy today if we sin? Very clear, Hebrews 4 verse 16, that we can approach the throne of God to obtain mercy in the time of need. That means if I would sin, I can still approach God's throne, not literally coming into his, to his throne room, but through faith, I can come into his throne room and obtain mercy. So I want us to see in Revelation chapter 15, verse eight. And my question is this, I'm gonna read the verse. I'm gonna read the verse. And my question to you is this, when I read this verse, my question is simple, is probation open or is it closed? Now we are studying the Bible and I'm, I'm, I'm actually what we were, uh, inspiration actually counsels us in the book Evangelism, page 363, that in place of so many sermons, there should be a close searching of the word of God, opening scripture text, by text. So inspiration admonishes us that instead of sermonizing, we should be studying the Bible. And that's why when I read that quotation and I understood that, I said from henceforth, Lord, we will be studying. And by God's grace, 
I'm going to keep on teaching the Bible study. Now, nothing's wrong with sermons. It's good. But in Evangelism 348, she tells us why they shouldn't be sermonizing. She says, those who frequently listen to sermons, though the truth be presented in clear lines, learn but little. So she's saying through sermons that might carry the truth, but people learn but little. But through Bible study, you can gain much more. So I'm going to read this verse and we're studying. So I'm going to ask you the question and you can answer. I'm going to read the verse and I want you to tell me is probation open or closed. You can just answer it in your mind. If I cannot hear you, it's fine. But Revelations 15 verse 8 says, it says, and the temple was filled with smoke from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple. Get that? No man was able to enter into the temple till the seven plagues of the seven angels were fulfilled. Now, my question is simple, saints. From this verse, can is probation open or close? Okay. I, I'm hoping you are saying probation is closed. And the reason why I'm hoping you say this is because the verse says that no man can enter into the temple of God. That means at this time, God is no more offering mercy. What's happening this time? The seven angels that contain the plagues that are going to pour out the plagues are now pouring out the plagues. So in the prophetic chart, you can see the close of probation. You would place that Revelation 15 verse 8. Close of probation. And then the seven plagues. This is what we see in Revelation 15 verse 8. Now, there's a question I'm asking. This is the question, saints. And I'm hoping I can get feedback with this question. Please. Who do the plagues fall upon? Anyone can answer that, whoever is able to. I, I would wait for a response. Who do the plagues fall upon? I'm just asking you to, anyone, who do the plagues fall upon? Thanks. Anyone with the mark of the beast who doesn't hey. give the, the, the seal of the you know, living Amen, my brother. I normally ask that question and people just say the wicked. But that is not true. As you said, it falls upon those who have the mark of the beast. Now let's prove that. Amen, amen, amen. This, this excites me when I get, oh, friends, amen. Let's read Revelation 16 now. Because Revelation 16 is just a continuation. We read the last verse of Revelation 15 verse 8. There's nowhere we can go, but continue reading. Now let's see where do the, who do the plagues fall upon. Take note verse 1. It says, and I, before, before I read this verse, I just want to know how much time do we have left so I know what can I skip over? How much time do we have left? Um, I think we've got up until about half past four, including okay. time for questions as well. That is well done. Yes, yeah, that, that, is, that, is, that is perfect. That is perfect. That should include time for questions as well. Amen. Oh, oh, oh. So you're saying, so you're saying including okay, questions will be up as well. I'm, 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 I'm getting a confirmation from the elder until she said even until five, it's fine. Okay. So I'll take it until half four, give it 30 minutes for questions. No, that, that is fine. That is fine. That is fine. So thank awesome. you. Revelation 16, Revelation 16, verse one, it says, it says, and I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven angels, go your way and pour out the veils of the wrath of God upon the earth. Now I want us to see who do the plagues fall upon. It says, verse two, and the first wind, that's the first angel with the plague, and poured out his veil upon the earth and there fell a noisome and grievous sore upon the men which had the mark of the beast and upon them which worshiped his image. Now, friends, do you understand the light that this verse just sheds upon the prophetic chart? This sheds so much light on the prophetic chart. Let me ask you the question. Question, can probation close? Before I even go further, we all agreed, at least from the ones I heard, that the plagues fall upon those who receive the mark of the beast. So my question is this, can probation close if there's no mark of the beast crisis? 
think for a moment, think for a moment, can probation close if there's no mark of the beast crisis? Because remember, when probation closes, the plagues get poured upon those who have the mark of the beast. So my question is this, can probation close without any mark of the beast crisis? Because we are told clearly that when probation closes, the plagues get poured out upon those who have the mark of the beast. So my question is this, saints, can probation close if there's no mark? Sorry? Did someone answer? Saints, feel free. I'm not sure if you get the question. The question is this, we just prove from the Bible that when the close of probation comes, we just read it now, that the seven plagues get poured upon those who have the mark of the beast. This is the prophetic word. So my question is this, can probation close if the mark of the beast crisis has not been enforced? In other words, can God close probation for the entire world and there's no mark of the beast crisis and then later on mark of the beast crisis comes can that happen according to what we see it cannot happen the bible teaches that when probation closes the plagues get poured upon those who have the mark of the beast so what the bible is telling us that before the close of probation if you look at the prophetic chart there's the cop there cop stands for the close of probation that's what COP stands for. But before the COP, before the COP, as the National Sunday Law, which we as Adventists know, as the mark of the beast. Now, I'm not, I'm not going to prove that's the mark of the beast. We should know this. This is the mark of the beast. Now, if we had time, we would prove this, but that's not the purpose. We should know this as Adventists. So the National Sunday Law, which is the mark of the beast, precedes the close of human probation. The Sunday law takes place before probation closes. Now, I want us to see something interesting. Now, I want us to read a quotation. I want us to read a quotation that's going to shed light on what we just say now. I'm going to read a quotation found in Bible Commentary, Volume 7, 976. Bible Commentary, Volume 7, page 976. Now, the National Sunday Law, which we can see in the chart, comes before the close of probation. So before probation can close, there must be a Sunday law. Everyone must choose either the seal of God or the mark of the beast. When a man chooses seal or when a man chooses the mark, his probation closes individually. His eternal destiny is decided. That means while man's living upon the earth, his eternal destiny will be decided. What crisis decides his eternal destiny? I'm suggesting to you it's the National Sunday Law. I'm suggesting to you that when the church and state unite to enforce a Sunday law, we have reached a point in earth's history in which people upon this earth, his eternal destiny is going to be decided. That means when a man decides mark or seal, he is sealed forever. There's no return. If he has the mark of the beast, there is no time to repent. If he has the seal of God, he's not going back into sin. Now I'm going to prove that. I'm going to prove that. Now I want us to see a quotation. And what I'm suggesting, that when the crisis breaks National Sunday Law, it's the last act in the drama. If you can see on your chart National Sunday Law above it, you can see last act in the drama. Do you know what's a last act in a drama when people are doing a play? This says the final act. The National Sunday Law, the mark of the beast, is the final act in the drama for Earth's history. When we see the National Sunday Law for us as Adventists, we have reached the limit. I'm going to prove that. Now, let's read this quotation before we prove that. I want us to see what the servant of the Lord says. Now, you can see the National Sunday Law takes place according to the chart before the close of probation. But I'm suggesting this to you, that even though probation closes sometime after the National Sunday Law. For the Seventh-day Adventist Church, for me and you, our eternal destiny will start to be decided immediately after the National Sunday Law. We enter into the judgment of the living. And I'm going to prove that judgment shifts from the dead to the living. That's a lot of words I'm speaking, but we're going to prove it. Now, I want us to see 
this quotation that is found in seven Bible commentary in 976. And I want you to see what the servant of the Lord says is going to determine our eternal destiny. And I want us to see what she says. We don't have until the general close of probation. No, our eternal destiny will be decided by a test. Let's see what she says. This is Bible commentary 976. She says, the Lord has shown me not foggy, but clearly. The Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. Pause. What did she say? She says that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. There's your thought. There's the close of probation, COP. And then she says the image will be formed before the close of probation. What's the image? The image of the beast is when church and state unite to enforce a Sunday law. Now, if I had time, I would walk through, through this with you with the Bible. We could show this very clearly from the Bible, but because of the limited time, we could not do that. I'll just read it. I'll just share to you a quotation from the book, Great Controversy. From the book, Great Controversy, page 445. What is the image of the beast? Listen to what's the image of the beast. She says, Great Controversy 445. When the leading churches of United States shall unite upon such points of doctrine as held by them in common, shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institutions, then will Protestant America have formed a, an image to the Roman hierarchy. Did you get what she's saying? She says in Great Controversy 445, when the leading churches of United States shall unite upon such points of doctrine as held by them in common, so church and state unite, what do they do next? She says, sorry, the leading churches unite first, the leading churches unite, then she says they shall influence the state to enforce their decrees and sustain their institutions, then will Protestant America have formed an image to the Roman hierarchy. So she's saying that the image of the beast is when church and state unite to enforce their own dogmas. That's the Sunday law. So listen to the quotation now. She says, the Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast, that's church and state uniting to enforce Sunday, will be formed before probation closes. Crystal clear, crystal, crystal clear that before probation can close, we saw that on our chart, there has to be a national Sunday law. So remember how we began with Great Controversy 594, that the, God has clearly revealed to us events in connection with the close of probation. What's the final event in connection with the close of probation? It's the national Sunday law. It's the mark of the beast crisis. And I just wish friends, we have just done a series on the Sunday law update You'll find it on our YouTube channel where we walk through the scene showing without a shadow of a doubt that we have but a few months left. Now, the articles, the news articles to prove this, we cannot just do a chair. There's just too much. So it's a series about, of, of already six presentations. Today we've done a, a, a Sunday law update. This one was the most clearest out of them all showing us there's just months left before we enter into the final crisis. Now I want us to see what the quotation goes on to say. The quotation goes on to say, I'm gonna start again. It says, the Lord has shown me clearly that the image of the beast will be formed before probation closes. Why must it be formed before probation closes? There's the answer. For it is to be the great test, get that. It is to be the great test for the people of God by which their eternal destiny will be decided. Did you hear that saying? Can you, let's, what does that mean? Your eternal destiny be decided, your probation closes. So when, the, when does our probation close? At the general close of probation? No, no. When does our probation close? What we just saw when Jesus pronounces those words, let him be that unjust, let him be unjust still. That's when the lost person chooses the mark or the seal. Then Jesus pronounces those words. When Jesus pronounces that word, everyone has already made up their minds. But here we see what starts the close of probation. It's the National Sunday Law. And we are, friends, friends, get this. According to this quotation, according to this quotation, when the Sunday Law is enforced, 
probation begins to close. You say, where do I get this? The quotation says that, for it is the image of the beast, it is to be the great test for the people of God by which they are eternally decided. So we talk is someone speaking? <clears throat> no, go ahead, go ahead. It says, for it is test for the people of God by which the eternal destiny will be decided. So what decides if what decides my eternal destiny while it's living upon planet Earth? It's my choice, the test I have to pass through, either the seal or the mark at the image of the peace crisis. Quotation's not finished. Let's keep reading. This is the test the people of God must have before they are sealed. So before I can receive the seal of the living God, I must pass through the test of church and state enforcing Sunday worship. The quotation goes on and it says, all who have proved their loyalty to God by observing his law and refusing to accept a spurious Sabbath will rank under the banner of the Lord God Jehovah and will receive the seal of the living God. Those who yield the truth, unfortunately, some of our brethren will yield the truth. Those who yield the truth of heavenly origin will accept Sunday Sabbath and will receive the mark of the beast. So we see very clearly according to this quotation that what begins the close of probation is the passing of the national Sunday law between church and state unite we pass, we enter into the test, which will determine our eternal destiny. To me, this is the clearest quotation on this point, that this test, is, so that means when I finish, do you know friends, we get tested every day, every day. Me and you get tested every day. We get tested over different issues. Sometimes we pass the test, sometimes we fail the test. If we fail, we still come before God, we confess our sins, we repent. But here we are told, blue words, this is the great test for the people of God by which the eternal destiny will be decided. According to this quotation, our eternal destiny will be decided, will be decided at this test. That means there's no repentance after you choose seal or mark. But lest you say, wow, I will wait for the crisis. I will love in sin and wait for the crisis. And when it comes, I just choose sin and I'm eternally saved. That's a delusion. There's a condition you must reach to receive that seal. There's a condition every Adventist must reach to receive that seal. And that condition, friends, this is the whole tenor of the Bible. As actually God's whole purpose of the Bible is to produce such a people. The whole plan of redemption hinges on God producing a people such like this. And friends, I wish we could speak on more, but you have to move on. So what have we discovered thus far according to this quotation, according to what we've studied thus far? And my time's almost finished and we're not yet getting to our point. What we have discovered thus far, back to our prophetic chart, what we have discovered that the National Sunday Law, what happens at the National Sunday Law as basically probation begins to close. Simple, I'll put it simple. We enter into the judgment of the living. God now investigates us, he investigates the living now. God investigates the living and those only who meet the criteria and pass the crisis and refuse the image of the beast, refuse the mark of the beast, will receive the seal of the living God. Our eternal destiny be, starts, to, starts to be decided at the passing of a national Sunday law. From that point, judgment of the living begins. Probation starts closing. And it first starts with the church. First Peter chapter 4. Let us see this. First Peter chapter 4. Now, you turn into 1 Peter 4, and I'm hoping you take your notes to go and test everything that's been presented. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter 4, verse 17. Now, before I read 1 Peter 4, verse 17, I'm going to share a quotation. In the volume 6 of the testimonies, volume 6 of the testimonies for the church, page 130. Volume 6, testimonies for the church, 130. I want us to see 
when does the servant of the Lord place the investigative judgment of the living, not of the dead? The investigative judgment of the dead began in 1844. If you look at the prophetic chart, you're going to see there 1844. And in black, you're going to see judgment of the dead. That we know that it as, as Adventists. But at the National Sunday Law, if you jump down at the National Sunday Law, you're going to see like almost a, 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 it's written there in the bottom, just above church tri triumph, it's written judgment of the living. At the National Sunday Law, God shifts judgment from the dead and he now investigates the living. See, probation cannot close. The very first quotation we read, that probation cannot close until God investigates the living. He starts judging the living whilst, or rather, at the passing of the National Sunday Law. Now, there's the quotation that proves that. Volume 6 of the Testimonies for the Church, page 130. We are told now when the great work of judging the living is about to begin. Pause. Digest that. Now, when the great work of judging the living is about to begin. If you read in something and the author says, now such and such and such, you know that the author is about to describe a certain thing. Now, this author or the writer, inspired by the spirit, is introducing to us the judgment of the living. Now, listen to what the servant of the Lord says. Now, when the great work of judging the living is about to begin, shall we allow unsanctified ambition to take possession of our hearts and lead us to neglect the preparation required to meet this day of peril? Listen, what crisis is she going to now link to the judgment of the living? In every case, the decision is to be made whether we shall receive the mark of the beast and his image or the seal of the living God. Digest that for a while, for a few seconds. Listen to what she's saying. Now, when the great work of judging the living is about to begin, shall we allow unsanctified ambition to take possession of our hearts and lead us to neglect the education required to meet this day of peril? Listen to what event is going to link to the judgment of the living. In every case, the decision is to be made whether we shall receive the mark of the beast and his image or the seal of the living God. What crisis does she link to the judgment of the living? She links very clearly the crisis of the mark of the beast. So when, when, when America enforces the national Sunday law, we have entered into the judgment of the living. God is now investigating the cases of the living. This is the bell and the pomegranate that is sounding. You know, in the priest, in the sanctuary on earth, which was a shadow of the heavenly things. The Bible teaches that the priest, when he walked in the sanctuary, there was a bell that sounded. That, that bell today, Jesus has bells around his garments, but it's not literal bells, it's prophetic bells that sound as Jesus moves. When Jesus moves judgment from the dead to the living, a bell sounds. What bell is it? It's a prophetic event on earth that tells us that Jesus has shifted ministration of judging the dead into the living. He now starts investigating the cases of the living. Our eternal destiny has now been decided. We read the quotation 7 BC 9, 976. At this point, when America enforces it, saints, that is the loudest bell to indicate judgment of the living began. That probation for the church is closing now. Our eternal destiny has been decided. Who does judgment begin with when Jesus begins judgment of the living? First Peter chapter 4, verse 17. The Bible says, for the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin with us, what shall be the end of them that obey not the gospel? So according to this verse, saints, where will judgment begin when it begins at the National Sunday Law? It begins at the church. 
it begins with Seventh day Adventists. So if the judgment of the living first begins with us, that means our probation closes first. And when the lost person makes up their mind, when the National Sunday Law is in force, probation begins to close. Judgment of the living starts. And when your case is decided, when you choose seal or mark, you are investigated in the sanctuary above. Your probation closes. And when God has a seal people within the church, they give the loud cry, the final message, the latter rain falls upon them. And they give the loud cry. And other sheep, as you can see here, yeah, it says during this time, during this time, during this time, there's the final shaking. I introduced this to you when we started Great Controversy 6 or 8 when the Sunday law comes. The wheat and the tears are separated at this time. The final shaking, some abandoned the faith. I quoted that Great Controversy 6 or 8. When the Sunday law comes, we saw next, it says under National Sunday law, the ceiling, we proved that we read a quotation. The loud cry takes place as well. That's, you'll find that in Lost Day Events 179. Other sheep come into the church at this time. Those in, 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 the, in Babylonian churches, the Sunday churches, Catholic church, Protestants, all of them come into the Adventist move at this time. But those who are in the movement who are not sanctified abandon the faith and they accept the mark of the beast. Now saints, I see my times moving. There's so much more to say about this chart. But I'm going to just mention this in passing because I can't go to all the texts. All we've done, we've used spiritual prophecy a lot to prove this, some of the Bible. But if we would go to Ezekiel 8, I would prove this chart to you, especially the center part of the chart. In Ezekiel chapter 8, I'm just going to mention this. I'm not going to go there because of no time. So I'm going to just tell you this. Go back and check it for yourselves. In Ezekiel chapter 8, Verses, I believe it's verses 15, 16, 17. Does anybody know what is the abomination that's getting practiced in Ezekiel chapter 8, verse 15, 16, and 17? God calls it as the greatest of all abominations. The Bible says there that the sun has been worshipped in Ezekiel chapter 8. That's Sunday worship. God calls it the greatest of abominations. Ezekiel, now if you would, if there's the chart there, where would you place Ezekiel 8 verses 15, 16, and 17? There's the chart. Where would you place it? If I would place Ezekiel 8, 15, 16, and 17, that's Sunday worship. I'll place it at the National Sunday Law. And then see what happens in Ezekiel 9. Jesus gives a commission to the angel. When sun worship starts, Jesus gives a commission to the angel. Jesus' words to the angel is, the sealing angel with the writer's ink on by his side. This is Ezekiel 9. He says, go through the midst of Jerusalem and set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry for the abominations that be done in the midst thereof. And then he says something interesting. Begin at my sanctuary. And they began at the sanctuary. It's very interesting, saints. Very, very interesting. That when the Sunday law is passed or Sunday worship is passed, we are told very clearly the sealing begins. God starts placing his seal upon his people. And where does he begin? According to Ezekiel 9, he begins at the sanctuary. My question is this. What is the sanctuary? The church. He begins with the church. Now question, can God put his seal upon you? If the angel, if you have not first been investigated, listen to the words of Jesus to the angel. Set a mark upon the forehead of the men that sigh and that cry for all the abominations. So in order for the angel to give you the seal, there's a condition you must meet. Thus, God must first judge you to see if you meet the conditions to receive the seal. So the judgment of the loving will begin according to volume 6, 130 will begin at the National Sunday Law. Our eternal destiny starts to get decided at the National Sunday Law. And therefore, if we can prove that the National Sunday Law is about to take place, that means, that means your eternal destiny is about to be decided. That means that within the next few months, the decisions you're going to make is going to determine where you're going to spend eternity. 
since you understand the solemnity of the times we're living in, this is no ordinary time. If ever there was a time to sleep, if ever there was a time to play with sin, it's not now. Friends, Jesus is about to come. Probation, as we know what is about to close. Friends, I wish God could impress these things upon your heart. And I'm, even as I'm speaking, I'm saying, Lord, impress this upon my heart. I need to realize the solemnity of the times. And friends, unfortunately, we are told in early writings, in the book, Early Writings, page 119, the angel said, the angel says, I saw the remnants that they were not prepared. The remnants is me and you. I saw the remnants that they were not prepared. Now listen to what the angel says. Stupidity, like lethargy, seemed to hang upon the minds of those who profess to believe we are having the lost message. Said the angel, get ready, get ready, get ready. These are the words of God to us today, friends. A crisis is about to break and many of us are still getting entertained with soap peace. Many of us are still eating a perverted diet. Many of us are still delighting ourselves in sin and probation is about to close. How can it be friends? We are finding pleasure in sin and Jesus who loves us, who died for us. Jesus is sending a message of warning, telling us set your life in order. These were the words of Isaiah to Hezekiah when he was about to die. Set your house, set your life in order. Friends, the end is near. And friends, listen carefully. No matter how vile we have been, no matter how sinful we have been, you know how sweet it was? We are studying the message of righteousness by faith. And we saw, we, oh, I wish I could just share hope. Oh, friends, it brought so much hope that the vilest of us, the one who's sitting here listening to this and saying, I'm doomed. You don't need to have those thoughts. The vilest of us, Oh, friends, I'm almost tempted to start sharing and quoting there, but I can't. I have to stick here. The vilest of us can find hope. The vilest of us can find pardon and peace and get ready for the crisis. Do you know freedom from sin is a gift? Do you know that victory over sin is a gift? Yes, there's a struggle, but the struggle is only to submit. When we submit our hearts to God, victory is us, ours. Friends, I wish I'm almost tempted to go there, but I'm going to say this. Listen, friends, listen to this. The thought, the thought that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us, not because of any merit on our part, but as a free gift is a most precious thought. This is what we are studying today, that the righteousness of Christ, did you get that? Listen to the servant of the Lord speaking, this is sweet. She says the thought that the righteousness of Christ is imputed to us, not because of any merit on our part, but as a free gift is a most precious thought. God, friends, we are start, we, we're actually studying the book Steps to Christ. This is one of the most beautiful books on righteousness by faith. Friends, victory over sin, we are told, in the book Steps to Christ. In the book Steps to Christ, faith and acceptance, the two, you just... Do yourself a favor. When we finish this, read the first two paragraphs of faith and acceptance steps to Christ. Victory over sin is a gift which you can receive from Jesus simply by surrendering your heart to him. Simple as that. Now, friends, there's much more. There's much more. I would show you there's a difference. There's, there's more. But I want to pause now. Maybe... Hmm. Yeah, I would pause now. There's, there's more, but I would pause. There's so much more. We have just basically just scratched the surface. I'm looking at the time and I just want, I want to show us much more, but we cannot do it because of the time. So what I'm going to do is this. I'm going to, there's more. Now, I'm going to mention something. I'm going to show us. Does anybody know this man? Does anybody know who's this man sitting in the middle with the white? Does anybody know who's that man? This man, we are told, according to the Bible, is the Antichrist. This is the man of sin. This is the son of perdition. This man, we are told, involved in the testimonies to ministers, page 117, 
we are told that this man figures largely in the winding up of this earth's history. This is what inspiration says. Jesus to the prophet tells us, this man figures largely in the winding up of earth's history. Now what does this man say? Now friends, you might think what I'm about to say, there's so much prophetic events, literally I'm serious, that I cannot keep up every week we are studying these things. And as much I could have shared with you, showing you you have a few months left because the Sunday law is going to be passed very shortly, but not as we expected. See, many Adventists are not going to see it the way, the way we think it's coming. It's not the way it's coming. It's not coming as what, what we have been taught or what, has, what have our minds have been programmed to think. And today we are looking at how it was going to come. The Bible tells us how it comes and inspiration, spirit of prophecy. But unfortunately, we're not, we're not going to study that now. But one, what I want us to see that this man who figures largely in the winding up of this earth's history, we're actually told in Testimonies to Ministers, page 118, 117, 118, she's summoned of the Lord says, all need wisdom to carefully search out the mystery of iniquity that figures largely in the winding up of this earth's history. So I want us to understand, she says, the servant of the Lord said, we need wisdom. Now I want us to see what this article says. It says, Pope Francis, the common good has become, what does he say? Global. The common good has become global. Now, to many people, this means nothing. But to a student of prophecy, this means much. You say, why do I say this means much? The man says the common good has become global. You must understand what that means. Now, I want us to see the next article. When, pope, when the Pope spoke at Congress, um, um, Pope Francis tells Congress it should use, now, unfortunately, I cannot see my screens blocking me. It should use its power to restore in hope, righting wrongs. Now I'm going to the red words. It says your Pope urges Congress to pass, put aside the vision and draw a nation's rich history to pursue the what? The common good. So when the Pope spoke at Congress in 2015, now there's even much, even with the year 2015, there was so much that is linked with what's happening today. But nevertheless, when he spoke at Congress in 2015, the Pope said that they should pursue the common good. We read an article just prior to this, Pope says common good has become global. And we just saw in our study today what that, me what that meant. Last year, we never see very clearly what it meant, but we studied it. But this, the study that we just had, we saw that this actually means we had a few months left. Now I want us to see the next article, what is the common good, which the man of sin said it has become global. Now, let me say this, I used to play chords before. I don't want to play chords. Messages to young people, we are told that chord playing God for birds. But before I knew the truth, I used to play chords. And I remember when I was very young, never know the Advent message, I used to play chords. And when I used to play my opponent, my cousins, wherever I would play with them, whenever I were to play chords with them, and I had two chords in my hand, I would say I changed the game chord. And I would change the game to the chord I have in my hand. And I knew he had no, eight, no chord to change the game. And I would change the game and I would say chord. I have the last chord in my hand. I would tap my hand and I would show him that the game's over before the game's over. Because whatever he moves, he makes, he can do nothing. The game is over because I know he can't change the game. All the eights are in the pack. Do you know 2019, Pope Francis tipped his hand. He tipped his hand to tell us the game's over. And every adventist should have known what that meant in 2019 and should have started making the necessary preparation to get ready. Now, even in this study, we have not even spoken about preparation. All we've done, we've looked at prophetic events. That's all we've done and showed the limit for the church, for us as individuals, as well as the church. Those who know the truth, there's still much more friends, much more. Now you say, he tip, you say I said he tipped his hand. Now let's see what is the common good. I'm going to the Catholic source.
this is a Catholic source, Catholic Herald, not, not Adventure source, Catholic Herald source. How Europeans are fighting back against Sunday trading. Uh, it says, yeah, bottom words, it says only those who recognize there's those key words that the common good concerns a man's soul can explain why we should legislate rest on Sunday. What's the common good? The common good is legislating rest on Sunday. Now let's go back to the article. What did the man of sin say in the article that the common good has become global? You say, how could he say that he just tipped his hands? In the next few months, we're gonna see the truthfulness of these words. We are studying this today and we saw without a shadow of a doubt, we have a few months left that this crisis is about to break. Now, <clears throat> now friends, you must understand what this means for us as a church, for me and you as individuals, it means our probation, our eternal destiny is about to be decided. Let's go further, let's go further. Now, I'm gonna skip that, I'm gonna come to this. In this article, the man of sin, he mentions a person, or at least when he spoke about it, that the common good has become global, he mentions a name. And I want us to see what name he mentions. In, in Daniel 8, the Bible says he speaks in dark speeches. That means he speaks in parables. So we need, when he speaks, you must try and understand what the man of sin is saying. Now I want us to see what the man of sin said. Pope Francis, saying, Pope Francis quoted, listen to who he quoted. It says, Pope Francis quoted St. Thomas Aquinas. Do you know who St. Thomas Aquinas? <laughs> Friends, when the man said the common good has become global, the man quotes St. Thomas Aquinas. Now you might be saying what you're getting hyped for, but you must know St. Thomas Aquinas. He's speaking in parables. I've got three minutes, I have to move on. Let's see who St. Thomas Aquinas. Catholic source again, Catholic Herald. Let's be honest, the Catholic Church doesn't always forbid the death penalty. Now, Revelation 13 verse 15 says that those who will not worship the image of the beast who, receive, who will not receive the mark shall be killed. Revelation 13, 15, 16, 17. This is what the Bible says. Those who will not come along except Sunday will be killed. I'm reading the red words, red words in the bottom. It says third, the death penalty can sometimes support the what? The common good. So the death penalty can support the what? The common good. Now listen, St. Thomas Aquinas makes this point. Who, who, did, who makes this point? St. <laughs> Thomas Aquinas, who quoted St. Friends, there's the article. Who did the Pope say when the common good has become global? Who did he quote St. Thomas Aquinas? to tell those who understand that if you would not come along with the common good, you would die. This is what, this is what the article, now listen, St. Thomas Aquinas makes the point, therefore, if a man be dangerous and infectious to the community on account of some sin, it is praiseworthy and advantageous that he be killed in order to save God the common good. What did St. Thomas Aquinas say? Should, should, should be done to people who will not come along with the common good, which we just saw that the common good, we just saw very clearly that the common good is Sunday, legislating Sunday rest. What did St. Thomas Aquinas say? You must die if you do not come along. When the Pope says the common good has become global, when he said that, who did he quote? St. Thomas Aquinas, friends, a storm's coming, a storm's coming. There's more, there's more. There's more. Mm. Friends. Do we know who's this man? I close on this point. This is Gunon Diop. 
Seventh-day Adventist Church. Kunon Diop is the Director of Public Affairs in Religious Liberty for the Worldwide What? Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, God bless his soul. We should be praying for Gunan Diop for the position he holds. This is Gunan Diop. He holds a high position within the Seventh-day Adventist Church. And we should be praying for all our leaders within the church, every one of them, everyone, specifically Elder Ted Wilson. But unfortunately, friends, unfortunately, Gunan Diop is actually shaking hands with the man of sin. And we're actually told in great controversy that Protestants taught their children to abhor popery and held that to seek harmony with Rome would be disloyalty to God. Did you get what inspiration says? To seek friendship with Rome would be disloyalty to the God of heaven. But how widely different as the sentiments now expressed. Friends, unfortunately, this is the state we are in. And we are told, unfortunately, it's a backsliding church that lessens its distance between itself and the papacy. Now, let me say this. This is our true condition. This is our condition. We're in a late of sin condition as a movement. I'm a part of this church. This is God's remnant church. But unfortunately, friends, unfortunately, if we are waiting for the general conference, God bless the many men, there are faithful men there, many faithful men there. But if we are waiting for them to sound the trumpet to tell us probation is gonna close, we're gonna wait forever. God has faithful men there, true. But if you're gonna rest your eternal destiny upon waiting from orders from, it's gonna be, you're gonna wait too long. Jesus is pleading with you, friends. He's pleading with me. We need to set our lives in order. Probation is about to close. Probation is about to close. I end with this quotation. I end with this quotation. <clears throat> if you want freedom from sin, you are struggling with thoughts. You know your thoughts are impure. You know your character is deformed. You know that your current life, you're in a backslidden state. There's the solution to your problem. This is the solution to my problem, my own backsliding. He who beholds the Savior's matchless love will be elevated in thoughts, purified in heart, and transformed in character. Do you want your thoughts to be clean? Behold the Savior's matchless love. Spend a thoughtful hour each day, we are told in Desire of Ages, page 83, contemplating the life of Christ. And as you do this, you'll behold his matchless love. And what will happen to you? Your, your thoughts will be elevated. Your heart will be purified and your character will be transformed. This is the solution. This is the solution to our backslidden state. This is the solution for the church. And the solution is Jesus. We must understand his love and experience his righteousness, which is offering us. Saints, shall we pray? And then we'll get into some questions and answers. Father, we thank you so much for the time you could spend studying your word. Lord, some of this might be new to some of us, but I truly felt your presence as we studied. This is what you wanted us to look at. Lord, please bless everyone that is hearing these words. And I'm pleading, Father, that you do something special in everyone's life, including myself. Lord, we all need Jesus. From our leaders on the top to us here, Lord, we are all in need of of your righteousness. Please, Lord, purify us and cleanse us. Give us an experience which we do not now possess. And Lord, I plead, if there's any soul who is in bondage to sin, to some addiction, some sin is holding them in slavery, please set thy children free, Lord. Please have mercy upon us and save us from others to come, Lord. Prepare us for your seal. We love you and we ask these things humbly, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, thank, thank you, you very much, my brother, for such a powerful 
uh, presentation. We really appreciate uh, the message and want to thank the Lord for using you. Yeah, um, I'm opening up for questions to the church now. If ever there is anyone with a question, please feel free. Um, you can go ahead or you can raise your hand. I think it's easier that way. If ever there is anyone who has a question, please feel free or addition if you want to add something. Yes, yes, um, yes, yes, yes. So I'm opening up to the church. I think there was a question somewhere at the beginning. Someone was asking when you introduced the lesson whilst you're waiting for others to, to ask questions. I think you mentioned that we are probation is in a few months' time. I think there was someone who was worried about time, but I think it was relatively, you were just saying it's close. It's near. Yes. I think yes, there was yes, someone yes. who the statement earlier on. Actually, it was a message that was written somewhere, and we wanted you just to clarify that. No, when I say few more months, I'm not giving that. I do not know the day and hour. That we cannot know. But when I say few months, I mean, actually, there's a quotation. And many people ask, why do you use the term few months? As because I only borrow language of inspiration. Ellen White's very clear in the book, Early Writings. She says, what it has taken, actually, let me just make sure, early writings. Hmm. I hope I find the quotation, yeah? One minute. <clears throat> ha -ha. She says, but now time is almost finished. And what we have been years learning, they, those who received the third angel's message, she says, they, will have to learn in a few months. Now, inspiration is saying that times come in in Earth's history when as, as we move on, that God's people are gonna have to learn things within a few months. And I believe that that few months which inspiration spoke about, we are now living in. I believe that now we're in the final months of this Earth's history because inspiration says a time will come when we're gonna know that time is almost up. And I believe that that, that quotation is pertinent today because we're in the final few months due to the prophetic events. Okay, thank you. I can see Lisa. Uh, Lisa, please go ahead. Is that a question or addition? Lisa, can you unmute, please? Okay, I know it's not, it's not a question. I actually want to ask uh, about the, um, the quotation that uh, he read on early writings. I, I missed the page, which talks about oh. the and that they were not prepared. Get ready, get oh. ready. I, I want oh. Yeah. oh, early writings, page 119. Early writings, page 119. Okay, thank you so much. Let me just make sure, yes, early writings, 119. Yes. That the remnants were not prepared. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Stupidity like lethargy seem to hang over the minds of those who profess to believe we're having the last message. Early writings, 119. <clears throat> yeah. I can see another hand written, Mel. Please, Mel, go ahead. Melo, please unmute and, and ask your question. Yes, please. Thank you very much. It's Mawira. Huh? Um, oh, yes. Yes, my question, I just need clarity on the, on your chat, there, there is a church triumphant and church victorious. So um, I, need, I need to understand um, uh, if there are quotations uh, or clarity on uh, why church triumphant is where there is matters, and uh, again, if there is a quotation for church victorious, because previously I used to know church militant and triumphant only, and I thought triumphant is the one that will take us through the seven last plots. Okay, okay. See, we, we did not cover that in our, in our study specifically talking about the church militant, church triumphant, church victorious. Church militants is what we're in today. 
The church is in a yeah. fighting condition. Militants, we are fighting now. There's wheat and there's tears. Church, militant, currently church triumphant, will be those who receive the seal of God and give the loud cry. But those who give the loud cry, some of them are going to die as martyrs. That's lost the events, page 150. Lost the events, page 150. But under church victorious, this is the 144,000 from the close of probation to the second coming of Jesus. This is the group we are told in Great Controversy 425 who are loving the sight of a holy God without a mediator. She says their robes will be spotless. Their characters will be purified from sin by the, by the blood of sprinkling through the grace of God and their own diligent effort. They will be victorious over sin. So that's Great Controversy 425. That's the 144,000 from the close of probation. That's church victorious from the close of probation to the second coming of Jesus. They love in the sight of a holy God without a mediator. Yeah, 425. Now, if you want more information on that, we have actually a study on YouTube. It's entitled The 144,000 and the Great Multitude. Actually, you'll find about three studies on the 144,000 where we walk through this prophetic chart. We walk through it in detail. So you can find that on YouTube messages of present truth. And you go to our playlist. When you go into our, our ministry, go to our playlist. You'll see one playlist specifically on the 144,000. And we walk through these events, almost a two-hour study that specifically deals with what you're asking. And there's much more information, obviously, there as well. Uh, thank you. I think that has been answered. Uh, I'm still waiting if ever there's anyone who still wants to add or ask the presenter. I can't see any hand here. No, oh, it's fine. It's fine, my brother. It's well, it's well, it's well. It's yeah, well. I think all is well. Actually, I, I, I really thank you, my brother, for, for oh, such a power. God. Powerful presentation. I don't know, Melo, Melo, are you coming back again? Is that a hand or you forgot to put your hand down? No, that is a hand. Oh, okay, cool. You can go ahead. No, okay, no, no. I, I, I just saw that, you know, there's, there's no other people who have got questions there. That's fine. So go ahead. I can also ask my other concern, my second one. On the close of probation, um, yes, yes, yes. The notion that there is a um, clause of probation for Adventist affairs. Uh, now I was, I was checking, I was listening closely. I, I needed to, to understand that one clearly. But anyway, I, I, I not clearly understood it. And uh, still on your chart, I see uh, one point where there is clause of probation. Um, I, I'm still struggling with the um, other, uh, I mean, with the notion, with the study that concludes uh, clause of probation for Adventist first is, uh, so it, it, it gives okay. a picture. Okay, that okay, I get, I get the question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I get the question, is, is I get the question. Is, yes, okay, okay. okay. I get the question. I'm going to answer the question now. If, okay, if this clause of probation yes, that's what I'm going like, to do now. I'm going to clarify it. Or it is just, a clause of probation within the the period of uh, judgment, but where we cannot specifically demarcate that here, on the, from this point, there will be no more Adventists to, 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 to the last clause of probation point. Can, can you just repeat what you just said? The last part? Can you, okay, can you clarify if we have two points of clause of probation, where we can uh, clearly demarcate that the probation of Adventists will end here. And then from this time onwards, it's only non Adventist, or it's just a, 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 an understanding that the judgment will start in the church. So somewhere in between, the judgment will move from the church to the general population, to that's the it, general that's population. It, that's it, that's it, that's it, that's it. All right, the, the, the last that's it. Yeah. Yeah, that, That's exactly what, just the second aspect of it, that's, that's what we are saying. Now, what that, they only, as I said, 
as we keep studying these things, God keeps revealing more light. Today, we marked out the exact point. When is it? Unfortunately, I cannot present it now because there's so much material to this. So what I'm going to suggest to you, the, the study is not yet up on YouTube because we just studied it today. But what I'm going to suggest to you, we have on our ministry channel, the Sunday Law Update 1, Sunday Law Update 2, and there's a few more studies. Then the study that we've done today is called Sunday Law Update 3. If you would watch these studies in their order, you're going to see there's a specific mark. I never knew that, but as we are studying, we started seeing it very clearly. So I'm going to suggest to you, go there and look at it, and you're going to see there is a mark. There is a specific mark. And you'll actually see that many of us, the way we think the Sunday law is coming is not the way it's coming. It's not the way it's coming. It's going to be a surprise to many Seventh-day Adventists. So just on the point that you mentioned, that you are struggling with the two clauses of probation. There's no actual clause of probation for direct, direct, direct clause of probation, but we can know that from this point, from this point, hence from this point, the judgment of the living begins. And now from this point, we can expect probation now for the church to close. Why? We read the quotation, our eternal destiny will be decided when we choose the seal of mark. No, it's, just, it's just common sense that if my eternal destiny is decided, is my probation open or closed? It is closed. And who does God test first? It's the church that passed through the test first. So whose probation closes first? It's those who passed through the test first. Their eternal destiny is decided first. So it's just common sense that if we're going to pass through the test first, that means our eternal destiny decided first. Now you want to write down volume nine of the testimonies. This is going to put a nail in a short place. Very clear quotation. Volume nine of the testimonies for the church, page 97. Servant of the Lord speaking and she says, there are many who have not yet heard the testing truths for this time. There are many with whom the spirit of God is striving. The time of God's destructive judgments as a time of mercy for those who had no opportunity to learn what is the truth. Now listen, listen to what she says. The time of God's destructive judgments is a time of mercy for those who had no opportunity to learn what is the truth. Tenderly will the Lord look upon them. His heart of mercy is touched. His hand is stretched out to save whilst the door is closed to those who would not enter. Can you see that she's saying that God's hand, his heart of mercy has touched to save one clause. But the door is closed to those who had the light, but who would not enter. Now, who is the people who got the light today? It's Adventists. So we see very clearly in volume 9, page 97, that the door of mercy will close first for the church. But there's one general close of probation. What do I mean when I say that? That means when... Our eternal destiny is decided when the world's, when everybody's eternal destiny is going to be decided. Our destiny is decided first. We, our destiny will be decided first. When the church passes through the test, God will have a people he can put his seal on who's going to give the loud cry. And as the people come to know seal of God, mark of the beast, and they make a choice, they either receive the seal or they receive the mark, the eternal destiny is decided. Seal or mark, eternal destiny decided. When the last person makes up their mind, probation would have already closed for, for this over 7 billion people. But when the last person makes up their mind on planet Earth, seal or mark, Jesus announces in the sanctuary above, let him that is unjust, let him be unjust. See, when Jesus announces those words, it's only a confirmation that everybody has already made up their minds. But he only says those words when the last person makes up their mind, seal or mark, and their probation is closed. Then he makes that declaration. Thus, probation closes for many beside before the general close of probation. I hope this was clear. Okay, okay. thank you very much. Very clear. Thank you very much. Okay, okay thank, thank you, you brother. brother Hope. Um, I can see a question on the chat side. It says, when will it end for the people of God to continue meeting? Could you, could you repeat the question? When will it end for the people of God to continue meeting? Saints, I'm, I'm, 
I'm, I'm going to have to divert you to the study we've done today because okay. that's what we, look, we, 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 we partially looked at this. I don't want to mention things and then we're going to have to start going into a whole study and trying to prove what I'm going to say, which might sound to some not too clear. But if you go and watch the study, when even the Sunday law comes, God's people will still be meeting, at least in the first two stages of the Sunday law. But in the third stage, there's going to be a different, there's going to be a shift of themes and also the fourth stage. So I would say that we would continue meeting even when the Sunday law comes, which is going to come in a way which many of us don't expect. And today we studied and we saw exactly how it's coming by God's grace. He showed us before, but only today we are able to prove it, to say this is what the Lord revealed, but now we can see it. So I would say that we will be still be able to meet and yeah, I, even when the Sunday Lord does come, God's people will still be meeting. But we must have an experience with Jesus for ourselves. That even if you are unable to meet with others, you will still have a rich experience. Our, 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 our experience must not be dependent upon gathering with other people. And it's true. God wants us to gather with other people, especially with people of like mind. And we're actually admonished in Hebrews that Paul says, as we see that they approach, as we see it approach, Paul says that we, to be, we ought to be gathering more and more and more, to, more often together. And unfortunately, we understand that coronavirus has come and the churches have closed, unfortunately. Now, friends, there's just much to say even on coronavirus, but it's, this is not a study. If, if it was our study, I would walk through the coronavirus and show you this was a pandemic and not a pandemic. It was a pandemic, and the Bible spoke about this pandemic. So, yeah. I would end there and yeah. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you. you. I, I can, can see, see someone, someone written close at home. Is that, that a hand? Please unmute and, and, and share the question or contribution. The one written close at home. Yeah. Yes, um, over to you. Close at home is here. Yeah. Um, thank you very much for a very good study and uh, quite a quite expository and uh, I like the presentation in that uh, you can actually follow. There is an issue that I want you to clarify concerning departure from faith and leaving the church. Would you repeat that? There is an issue that I want you to clarify concerning departure from the church concerning leaving the faith. There are two different things. We have seen a post. Are we together? You're not too clear. Is an apost... Am I clear now? No, but perhaps you have to Hello? repeat yourself again. You are breaking, you are breaking. Yes, you can repeat yourself again. Okay. Okay, there is. There is leaving the faith and leaving the church. Hmm. Right, am I clear? There is an issue that I want you to clarify there. Why? Because we will see that in the last days, the issue of gathering as a church might come to an end. And somehow the church is not immune to apostatizing, to following the same Thing that the government starts to defend the issues of worship in the last days. And it will be very um, dangerous to think that as an Adventist church, we are immune from following the um, leading of government. So I want you to clarify what will be happening. The church might apostatize and follow the government laws. And as you have just given, um, the one clip of Dio, is it Dio? Oh, no, so I Dio. just want you to clarify on that. Saints, I, I, I'm gonna just say that it's, that it's, the Bible teaches there's apostasy from the truth. One can be in the church, but apostatize from the truth in the sense that you can still belong to the body, of believers, but in heart you are Babylonian. This is clearly revealed in the Bible. Secondly, 
I want to also say that God has not called us to separate from the church. This he has not called us to do. This is the remnant church. This church is going through. The tears are going to be shaken out. Those who are now who are apostates in heart will be shaken out when the crisis breaks. Those who remain, those who remain are the true adventists. Now listen what I'm saying carefully. Those who remain might not have control over the building of the church. They might be kicked out of the building because they refuse to come along with Sunday. You say, what will Adventist church be keeping Sunday service? Yes, saints. Review and Herald March 18th, 1888. Now I'm gonna try and find a quotation. I don't wanna, I, I hope I got the quotation marked in my Bible, but I'm gonna see if I marked it in my Bible, but it's in Review and Herald March. Review and Herald March. I want to just see if I can find the quotation. I don't want to give you a wrong quotation. Review and Herald, March 18th, 1884, paragraph 8. Servant of the Lord speaking there. She says, she says, hmm, the Lord has a controversy with his people. Uh -uh. The Lord has a controversy with his professed people in these last days. Pause. Who is the professed people of God? The Seventh-day Adventist Church. The Lord has a controversy with his professed with the prophet with his professed people in these last days. In this controversy, men in responsible position, men in what position? Responsible position will pursue a course directly opposite pursued by that of Nehemiah. They will not only ignore and despise the Sabbath, but they will urge upon the congregation, she says, in open air. In, in, in meetings, she says they will urge upon the congregation to keep the first day of the week. Go and read that quotation. Go and read that review and here on March 18, 1884, paragraph eight. Servants of the Lord is telling us that some of our churches in the last days are gonna call their congregation and tell the congregation to go along with Sunday because the government has enforced Sunday. And Ellen White says that God's gonna have a controversy with these professed people. She says men in responsible positions. Now friends, when we hear quotations like this, many people think now we ought to bash the church leaders and achieve, no, -uh. be careful. The Bible says, be very careful. See, when you understand this message that we are studying, when you understand it, your eyes will not be so much upon the leaders, but upon your own wicked hearts. Our hearts are wicked. And when we realize how wicked we are, we don't want to watch no one else, but we want to say, Lord, set my life in order. Lord, please help me to get ready. Time is short. But at the same time, we are to be aware of the apostasy. This is God's church. No matter how unfaithful man might be, God is still faithful. And this is his remnant church. It's going through. I'm staying in the ship. No matter which leader apostatized from this church, I'm staying in the ship. It's going through, saints. It's going through. So my, I, I hope this answers your question, my elder. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Divani. I don't know, uh, Mushawa, Mr. Mushawa, do you still have a question? Uh, seeing that we have three minutes to, we have been given th 30 more minutes for probation, but we can't go past. <laughs> We can go past five. Uh, <laughs> do you have another question? Okay, I think probably yours, his end was already up, but I uh, thank you so much, uh, Brother Divani, for such a beautiful Please message. Uh, Please I, Please think, I think you presented it one time in Greenwood Park and I was not yes. there and my, yes. my family was trying to, to, to pierce together the pieces and I was like, ah, I wish I can listen to this man, but <laughs> yeah, definitely this was quite, um, a very brilliant presentation. So what I'm getting from people is, do you are you able to share the slides with me? I'm the one that have been communicating with you through WhatsApp. No and problem. The phone. No problem. Not a problem. Can, yeah, you can WhatsApp it to me, or I'll also share with you my email so that I can have a copy yes, of the. It's better if you email. I don't have WhatsApp. Yeah. All right. Yeah. That's fine. I think I will communicate with you after this. And uh, I think whoever also wants to get in touch with the speaker, you can also get hold of me. Yes, I can yes. share with you the presentation. Yes, you can Thank share my features. Much. Yes, and I think the, yeah, and I think the message does not leave us the same kind of people. It's a it's a startling message, uh, as you have you would have seen on the chat that currently we are at the time of preparation. I think I did read somewhere that you know when probation closes, 
you cannot suddenly switch sides because characters take a lengthy period of time to, be, to, 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 to come to what they are. So God has given us this time as a time for preparation, to lose sight of self and to develop Christ-like graces every day. So I am actually going to ask, um, I'm going to ask, uh, let me see who I can just delegate. I'm going to ask Brother Samuel Rakabopa, who is in our midst, to unmute and commit to the church as well, that this message might lead us to true revival, a revival that, that brings reformation to our lives, a revival of primitive godliness, so that we can live the life that God wants us Amen. and shake off the Laodicean disease of lukewarmness, Amen. that we might be people that are ready for the soon coming of Jesus Christ. Amen. And also that it was a day of fasting and prayer for us, so it would be a good <laughs> point of uh, to wrap up our day of fasting and prayer so that we really ask the spirit of Lord to re revive to, mm. to, to mm. in us because mm. his spirit is not in us we can, we are not part of he, we are not part of him so please commit the church of God into the hands of the Lord and that all of us might receive the spirit without measure as was Christ Jesus over to you our elder Rakaboba. thank you can you hear me yes we can all right, uh, let us uh, bow our heads as we pray. Our Father in heaven, we want to come to you uh, this evening, this afternoon. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus Christ, for the blessed Sabbath. We thank you because you love us. But we also love you, Lord. We also want to pray and ask for forgiveness for the things that we might have done and also for things that we might not have done, which we were supposed to do. Please forgive us our trespasses as you forgive those who trespass against us. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from evil. I thank you, Lord, for our brother whom we have brought to us to present such an urgent message that uh, every man uh, uh, must hear. This is a must message that uh, a message that everyone must hear. Every man. I thank you so much, Lord Jesus Christ, because you have allowed us to be in a lockdown and allow some of us who could not, who are not able to travel and get to these messages where they're being preached. Because of technology, you have allowed us to get in touch of this message. You are so you are, you are so wonderful. You are you are amazing. And your wisdom, Father, we, we can't uh, comprehend it. Thank you so much, Lord Jesus Christ, for allowing us to have this message. Maybe this is the last message that we have had uh, for some mm -hmm. of us. Maybe there's one brother, one sister out there who's supposed to hear this message for the last time. Mm -hmm. Please, Father, do not allow anyone, do not allow anyone who have had this message to go home and leave their life, their life, the same way they were living before they've had this message. Let this message cutting across and, and piercing through our hearts so that we can be able to be changed and, and, and know that the time, uh, we, we no longer have time. We are living in the extra time, Father, where we, we, we can't actually know what is going to happen, Father. Please help each and everyone. I want to pray firstly for our leaders in, uh, 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 for this church. You have, uh, uh, it's clear that this is your church and we are going home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Father, we know very well that uh, we are church militant and we know very well, Father, that there's a lot that is happening. But the fact that there's a lot that is happening within your church doesn't suddenly mean that this is not the right church. Mm -hmm. Please help us, Father, to be able to stand firm and not to wait for the leaders, but to pray for them, but not to wait for them to make things happening. Please help us, Father, to know that this is an individual decision that we have to make. These are choices that we have to make as an individual. No one is going to be making this individual based on what their fathers believe in, based on what their elders, leaders, pastors, and, 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 and deaconess and deacons what they believe. It is an individual choice. These are individual choices that we have to make as individuals, not as a church. But we thank you because you have brought us this platform for us to understand and to learn as a church. 
please help us, Father. I'm told that there's been a prayer and fasting day that has been happening with your, your church has been praying, has been fasting, Father, whatever that they've been fasting and praying for, let, uh, uh, please, Father, come down and be with them and help them to answer their prayers. We know very well, Father, that everything that we do, especially on a Sabbath, Father, you have done a lot of things. I want to pray, Father, all those who are hearing this prayer, not because I'm holy or I'm better than them, but simply because I know someone who's better than me. Please, Father, I want you to help them. Those who are sick, who are heartbroken, please help them. Those that have lost hope, Father, because we have prayed and we have fasted, please uh, uh, help them, Father. Those that have been losing hope, those that are thinking that, no, this, this is not going to work, this thing is not work, going to work, Maybe because of the situation that they've been through, Father, they've lost hope in you. Please, Father, revive them, revive their hope. I want to pray, Father, for those that are in broken marriages. Please revive those marriages, Father. Please revive the son who's there, who's about to leave their home because of, the th because of, because of uh, uh, things that are happening out there, Father. Help those who are struggling in what they should eat and what they should not eat. Those who are struggling when it comes to appetite, please help them, Father. Those who are appetizing the issues, matters of Sabbath, please help them, Father. We all want to go to heaven. We all want to be saved. Please help, please help us, Father. Help your church, help the leaders. Lastly, I want you to pray for our brother. Father, we know this is very scary message. And this is so relevant message. And we know the devil is not happy about this message. And I know for a fact that he's going to plan. He has already started planning, doing some funny tricks to make sure that the brother will not continue with this kind of message. I want to pray for him. I want to commit, I want to commit him uh, before you, Father. Please help the brother in his ministry such that, Father, when everything is going to be closed, the probation is going to be closed, his name will be also among those who will be sealed. Please, yeah. Father, include myself yeah. and my family and himself and his family and all yes. the leaders who are on this platform and their family, Father. I want to pray that because of this day, because of this prayer, Father, let him also be shocked by the message that you're going to reveal yeah. to him, Father. Yeah. Please help him, Father. We know, Father, that when he's presenting these messages, Father, sometimes, Father, the devil would come and wanting to give him that the idea that he knows everything. I want you to shock him with the messages that you're going to present to himself before he present to others. Please help him and his family, Father, so that when you come one day, we are going to see this brother and we say, because of this session on Zoom, we are all saved and we are here. Please bless him when you are going to bless others this Sabbath, Father. We are claiming the blessings of this Sabbath this day. Be with each each and everyone who is or who was on this platform. I pray all this in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't forget those who are planning these services on Zoom. Bless them accordingly. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right. Uh, amen and amen. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. I do hope and trust that this presentation will be of eternal consequence. Uh, the, this, this presentation will be available on, uh, on, on an, as an audio or it's also available as well on our Facebook page. So please share as much as you can. The Lord bless us and keep us until we meet again. Thanks and God bless you all. Amen. 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 Amen.